Okay, we're going to go over Tetralogy of Fallot. Not Tetralogy of Fallot, Tetralogy of Fallot. There's four parts to this, uh, well, four factors that make Tetralogy of Fallot possible. Okay, there is pulmonic stenosis, and a good mnemonic for this in, in first aid is PROVE, P-R-O-V, so I think PROVE that you have a Tetralogy of Fallot. Okay, P for pulmonic stenosis. The pulmonary artery is clearly what goes into your right and left lungs. Okay, so we're blocking air, uh, blood from getting to your lungs. R for right ventricular hypertrophy. Because what you're going to see in a minute, it's going to be so difficult for the right side of the heart to push through this stenotic artery. You're going to be increasing the muscle. Okay, you're going to get hypertrophy in the right ventricle to try to push it through there harder and harder and harder and over time. This is going to hypertrophy to try to compensate for that. Okay, O for overriding aorta. So what this means is that you're going to instead of going uh, of the blood going from your right ventricle up your pulmonary artery, you are overriding the pulmonary artery and going up the aorta. Okay, so now we know that this is all deoxygenated blood and this deoxygenated blood should be getting oxygenated through the pulmonary artery but it's not because we're being overridden because of this pulmonic stenosis and it's going to be shot out the overriding aorta okay and lastly the VSD is what makes it all possible but the number one prognostic indicator in pulmo is uh, pulmonic stenosis okay how bad this pulmonic stenosis is and how clogged it is will really determine uh, how much blood or how little blood is going to get into your pulmonary artery and how little blood then is going to be oxygenated. Okay, so the worse this pulmonic stenosis is, the less blood you're going to get up in your pulmonary system and the less blood is going to be oxygenated and the less blood you're going to get to your oxygen tissues and the less blood you're gonna to get to your brain and you're going to pass out, okay? And when you do pass out, this is called a tet spell for tetralogy and spell being what's happening. So the tet spell is, is when you're passing out um, cyanotically. So you can pass out from this or just become blue at different times, okay? So the cyanotic spell is called a tet spell is really what it is. Um, so let's go into, well, you can treat that, by the way. You can treat the TET spells with beta blockers, with giving pure oxygen, and you can squat as well. And when you squat, these kids do learn to squat on their own, and it's because their body is rewarded when they squat down and they put pressure on their arterial system in their legs. Okay, so these arteries are being blocked off now, and they're going to get a reward by increasing afterload in the system, okay? So the afterload, which is coming up the, uh, the aorta, okay? This pressure is gonna be increasing the aorta and it's going to not allow as much blood to go through the aorta from the heart, okay? The deoxygenated blood and you're gonna increase the pressure across the ventricular septal defect and you're gonna increase the amount of blood that can make it up the, the uh, pulmonic artery. Okay, so that's why you're going to squat there. Um, what else? Overriding aorta. Uh, okay, the, the reason this happens, and this is just a memorization thing, is it's an anterior superior, anterior superior displacement. So anterior forward and superior upward displacement of the infundibular septum. Okay, so really what that's saying is that the, it's a failure of the aortopulmonary septum to align. Okay? It's not aligning properly. And so you're going to get overriding aorta, you're going to get this ventricular septal defect, uh, subpulmonic stenosis is also involved, and then you're going to get right ventricular hypertrophy just because you're getting uh, not enough blood through the pulmonary artery and you're having to work harder to try to push it out. It's eventually going to override across the ventricular septal defect, go through here, uh, through the aorta. You're going to get deoxygenated blood shooting through here. And usually 
if you have a ventricular septal defect, you're not going to be cyanotic. Okay, any ASD or VSD or PDA is going to have late cyanosis, and late cyanosis being only when you have an Eisenmenger complex, finally, uh, because you're having the, the, the left to right shunt, left to right shunt, because the left is more strong, is stronger than the right, this is usually going to be the way blood goes across a ventricular septal defect, but this is the only ventricular septal defect that will go right to left instead of right, left to right. Okay, so this is early cyanosis. This is early cyanosis with a ventricular septal defect. One of the only times this will happen. Okay. Um, so what's the best? Uh, what's the what's the prognostic indicator? What's the most important determinant for prognosis in these patients? Subpulmonic stenosis. Okay, so the the amount of stenosis in the pulmonary artery. How about? Um, oh, uh, I was pointing to the pulmonic stenosis down here. This is subpulmonic stenosis, pulmonic valvular pulmonic stenosis as well. Okay, but it's just stenosis across here. I, I didn't remember the difference between these two. I didn't even know there was. Um, what is a patient going to do, a small child um, who's turning blue all the time, we call those tet spells, and he's squatting. Why is he squatting? He's increasing the afterload. Right. So by squatting, he's compressing the arteries in the legs, which increases the pressure in the system, in the arterial system, and it increases the afterload. It lets less blood override through the aorta and more blood be squeezed up through this stenotic valve. Um, I think that's it. Femoral artery, okay, compression, resistance, increased pressure. Let me see, oh, okay, on x-ray, you're going to see a boot-shaped heart, okay? So a boot-shaped heart just being, this, this painting doesn't really do it justice, but it's going to come, the, since the right ventricular hypertrophy is going to be so great, it's going to come down and across, and eventually it's going to look like a boot, your heart will. Okay, um, yeah, boot-shaped heart due to right ventricular hypertrophy. Uh, why did it happen? Why is tetralogy of Fallot happen? It's a failure of the arterial pulmonary septum to align. Okay, so it's anterior superior displacement of the infundibular septum. Either of those will work. Um, that spells treatment, beta blocker, oxygen, squatting, and fluids. Why fluids? Because you can increase the arterial pressure again. Okay, so you increase fluids, you're going to increase the systemic pressure, you're going to have increased afterload, more blood through the stenotic valve. <laughs> um, <clears throat> okay, I think that's it. Blue when, when cry because increased pulmonary pressure. Uh, okay, I have a note here that kids turn blue when they cry because of increased pulmonary pressure. Um, I don't know why I wrote it in there, because I'm not going to look like an idiot trying to explain it right now, but I guess when they're crying, they're increasing their pulmonary pressure, and it's decreasing the amount of blood getting through uh, the, the, the system of the pulmonary arteries. Okay, so you're increasing pressure in the lungs, you're backing up the pressure in the system, and you're going to decrease the amount of blood going into the pulmonary arteries. This is going to decrease the amount of oxygenated blood coming back out and you are going to turn blue even quicker. So maybe that's what the TET spell is all about. Um, very possibly. Okay, uh, I hope you learned something. That's it. Uh, four parts of it. Four parts. One more time. Four parts of Tetralogy of Fallot. P-R-O-V, remember? Pulmonary stenosis, right ventricular hypertrophy, overriding aorta, and ventricular septal defect. Good luck.